Why Coronavirus is a Weapon In this video, you'll find everything you need to know about why coronavirus is not a flu. Welcome to Curiosity TV, the place where you, curiosity addicts, will find answers to so many of your questions. We hope you like this new video we created especially for you. We want to satisfy your curiosity about so many questions that cross your mind. That's why we're here. If you've read or heard people talking a lot about how coronavirus is just the flu, this video is for you. You've probably heard or talked about the fact that so many people die anyway of the flu, so there's no need for all this global panic. Well, wait till you find out about that one crucial difference that everyone is overlooking. It's a huge reason why we have so many active cases and deaths. Of course, it's understandable that people are making comparisons between coronavirus and the flu. After all, there are common symptoms, like coughing or having a fever. They're also both spread in the same way, through droplets that come out of the mouth or the nose. That can happen if you inhale these droplets. And that's why six feet are recommended between people to avoid contagion. Contagion can also happen if someone coughs and the droplets land on your hand, and if you touch a surface that has droplets on it and then touch your face. A lot of people tend to reassure themselves by saying that coronavirus is only like the flu. It's not. Coronavirus is serious and should be taken seriously all around the world. Did you know that some experts predict that 40 to 60 percent of the world's population will get coronavirus? COVID-19 is not the most contagious disease ever known, but it's still way more contagious than the seasonal flu, the influenza virus we know. The basic reproduction number of COVID-19 is the number of people one sick person is likely to infect. It is used to measure how contagious any disease is. This number for the seasonal flu is 1.3. That means one sick person infects one to two people. These two people will infect two to four others, and so on and so forth. After 10 rounds, that's 56 people with seasonal flu. For COVID-19, the basic reproduction number is 2 to 2.5. That means over 2,000 people are infected after 10 rounds. And that's a calculation assuming that the basic reproduction number is 2 and not 2.5. So 56 versus 2,000, that's a huge difference. If you thought that was shocking, wait till you get the most crucial difference between coronavirus and influenza. Speak about that huge number compared to influenza to a friend and they might say to you, but I'll get treated because I know that COVID-19 is not necessarily deadly. No, it's not, but that's not the point. With the flu, the hospitalization rate is 1 to 2%. That's the percentage of infected people who need to get hospitalized. That means they will need ventilators, hospital rooms, ICUs, and doctors and nurses to take care of them. With COVID-19, it's about 20%. Out of this percentage, 15% will need to get general medical care and 5% will need intensive care. Remember that the numbers are just estimations because we don't know how many people are infected mildly in their homes. They don't get tested, so they're not taken into account in the data. But still, from what we see now, the numbers are huge. So it's not just that the 2,000 is a big number compared to 56 for the flu, it's the fact that way more people will need medical care both because the spread is wider as shown by the basic reproduction number and because the fact that the probability that people will need hospitalization is much higher. As we said in our previous video, the problem is that when a huge number of people are sick and hospitalized, it might exceed the country's resources. The healthcare system could collapse and people simply won't be able to get the proper treatment. Imagine doctors and nurses having to choose who lives and who dies because there's simply no room for them or enough staff to take care of them. That's not even taken into consideration the needs of people who have other diseases. Hospitals could be so overwhelmed with the coronavirus pandemic patients that other patients would not be able to find rooms or medical staff to treat them. If you think of the prediction that 40 to 60 percent of the world's population will eventually be infected with the virus, that will be an insane number of people who need medical care at hospitals. It could make healthcare systems literally collapse. It's so important that people get medical care. If it's not you now, it could be you later or someone you love. You might think, but a lot of people die from the flu too. Why are we focusing on the number of deaths for COVID-19? Yes, thousands die from the flu every year. As for COVID-19, we can't know for sure how fatal it is because it's pretty new. It's been here for just a few months now, so we don't have a lot of data to be able to give exact numbers. 
Also, bear in mind that the numbers give a very grim picture. They're only about the confirmed cases that were tested in labs. These are the people who found their situation serious enough to go get tested. So many people get it mildly and they stay at home and recover. These are not included in the numbers that are used to estimate the mortality rate. So speaking of mortality rate for corona at this point is misleading. Also, it's a different mortality rate for every country, based on how many people get tested. Let's speak numbers. Data from the Center for Disease Control show that deaths from the flu range from 22 to 55,000 in the 2019 to 2020 flu season in the U.S. By April 5, 2020, Corona had already killed over 68,400 people around the world. Check the tracker for coronavirus on the day you're watching the video and compare. And take into consideration the fact that we're just a few months into the pandemic since December 2019 and that scientists predict that the numbers will keep going up. So Corona is expected to be more fatal than the flu. The mortality rate of the flu is 0.1%. That's one in a thousand people. And it depends on age and pre-existing conditions. For Corona, some scientists estimate that it's 1%. So coronavirus could be 10 times more likely to kill than the seasonal flu. The way people die from coronavirus or from the flu is because of breathing problems. They develop something called acute respiratory distress syndrome. ARDS. ARDS happens when the walls of alveoli, the air sacs where breathing happens, get damaged. The result is that oxygen doesn't get from the air to the bloodstream. That causes shortness of breath and low oxygen levels. Now take the next difference between coronavirus and the flu. A person can sit close to someone who has the flu and not get infected. How does that happen? That's because a lot of people have developed immunity against the flu. Maybe they've had their flu shots. When you've been vaccinated, you are less likely to get infected or can get it, but it will be less severe. In fact, people must take their flu shot to avoid getting infected by seasonal flu. They should take influenza seriously too. Another reason why one may be less susceptible to get influenza is that maybe they've already been infected with that kind of flu before. So the people who are infected cannot infect them. These two factors make the seasonal flu spread less. And even when the human influenza mutates every few years, it's still something similar to the flu we know. It recombines and gets mixed with influenza viruses from animals like pigs and birds, so the swine flu or the avian flu. This is when pandemic plus happens. They're more aggressive. But most of the time, when the virus mutates, it's usually a flu that's changed a little. It's still similar to older types of influenza we already know, so our bodies have a certain extent of immunity to it. For these kinds of flu, there is an antiviral drug. It's not a cure, but it makes it less severe. With COVID-19, it's completely new. We have no cure, no vaccine, thus no immunity. It's so foreign to our bodies that if we're exposed to it, we get infected. Everyone is susceptible to it. A vaccine for corona will take at least a year or two to develop before it can be used on a large scale. That's what experts think. So the solution is not there yet. As of now, there's no official drug for coronavirus. Some medications can relieve symptoms, but there's no cure for it. Now the next thing is what makes coronavirus a real hidden weapon. You might use it without knowing, and it goes all downhill from there. It's the ghost that is the incubation period of the virus. Now when you get the flu, you show symptoms in just a couple of days, right? With coronavirus, it's usually after five days, but can go up to 14 days. So you can be infected and walk around, meet people, hug them, and spread the virus unknowingly, because you are actually contagious even before you know you're sick. Let alone the fact that the duration of the coronavirus symptoms can reach up to one month. With the flu, you can recover in about a week maximum. When someone gets coronavirus, they can get a cough or fever, and then after a week or so, they start developing breathing problems and get pneumonia. This long disease course is not common for the flu. So you just learned about all the differences between the coronavirus and the flu. It's way more contagious, so its spread is wider. Its hospitalization rate is higher, so it can cause healthcare systems to crash. It will probably turn out to be 10 times more likely to kill than the flu. And we have no immunity against it, and it has no cure or vaccine. And we could be walking around with COVID-19 without knowing it and keep spreading it to our loved ones. So please don't take coronavirus lightly. Social distancing is the only way to fight the virus. Stay home, wash your hands a lot, and don't touch your face. You can play a major role in saving the world.
We hope you learned something new in our video, Curiosity Addicts. Nothing like having your curiosity satisfied no matter what the topic is. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel, Curiosity TV. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Leave a comment and tell us about what difference you think is the most dangerous between the seasonal flu and COVID-19. And tell us about other myths you've heard about coronavirus. Stay informed and stay safe. Thank you.